Hello world, Noah here, and welcome back to CS University. In this video, we're going to be talking about Boolean logic. So, what is a Boolean? Well, we actually talked about this in the uh, video where we were talking about the data types that a variable could have. This was probably the second lecture, uh, so it's been a little while, and we haven't talked about Booleans too much since then. And so just to give a very quick refresher, a Boolean is a fancy word for a true or false value. It's a value that can either be true or false, and there's no other you know, third option. It has to be one of those two. And it may at this point seem a little silly or unnecessary, um, you know, but as we work through this lecture, I think you'll come to see why Booleans are actually quite important and, and quite useful. And so in Python, again, these are true or false values, as in any language, but in Python, um, we represent, we have these two constants, we have capital T tr uh, true, and we have capital F false. And maybe that's a little hard to read, so let me try and rewrite it. So we have capital T true and capital F false. And, uh, you know, some languages like Java or C will use a lowercase t true and a lowercase f false. But Python uses capital letters, so that's something that you should definitely remember. These are just the constants, right? But if we only had these two constants, true and false, you know, the Boolean data type would not be terribly interesting. Uh, but what we can actually do is we can construct these expressions that will give us a Boolean result. And it will actually make a lot of sense. Let's take a look at uh, some of the very basic ones. Let's look at some of the comparison operators. So imagine I have two numbers or two variables, a and b, and a is going to be equal to 5 and b is going to be equal to 6. So that uh, you know, little piece of code, there's that multiple assignment thing. But if that confuses you, it's the same exact thing as saying a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 6. So those two, those two um, you know, snippets of code are equivalent to each other. What we can do is we can actually compare a and b to each other, right? They're both, they're both integers, so it makes sense to do a comparison. And a lot of the questions that you ask are going to be yes or no questions or true or false questions. And so that's where the Boolean part comes in, and that's why the Boolean part actually makes sense. All right, so the first operator here, the two equal signs, um, that basically is asking the question, uh, is A equal to B? So is equal to, right? And so when you have one equal sign, which we've seen a lot before, the one equal sign means that you're assigning a value. So if you said A equals B with one equal sign, you're saying I want to change the value of A to be whatever the value of B is. But that's not what we are doing here. That's not what we want to do here. What we're doing here is we're asking the question. We're saying, is A equal to B? Do uh, A and B contain the same value? right? And this is a yes or no question. Either A is the same as B, it has the same value as B, or it does not. And so this is either going to be true or false. It'll be a Boolean. And in this case, the answer would, of course, be false, right? because A uh, a is equal to 5, and B is equal to 6, and so 5 is not equal to 6, so the answer would be false. Uh, the next operator, exclamation point equals, that means not equal to, or is not equal to. So it's, it's the exact opposite of the equals equals. So is not equal to. And so in this case, A not equal to B, that would be true, because A is 5 and B is 6. 5 is not equal to 6, that is true, right? Um, then, you know, these other four are probably pretty self-explanatory, but just to go through them, uh, we have A is greater than B. Well, 5 is not greater than 6, so this is, uh, you know, false. We have A less than B. Okay, 5 is less than 6, so those are true. Uh, A greater than or equal to B, and less than or equal to. So, you know, they are pretty self-explanatory. And again, these are going to be false and true just like that. What you'll notice again is that in all of these cases the answer is either true or false. There's no third option. It's either a is equal to b or it's not. There's no there's no, you know, third option there. Um, and one other thing that I think is worth mentioning is um, you know, the opposite of a is greater than b is not a is less than b. The opposite of a is greater than b is actually a is less than or equal to b. 
So these are opposites. This is something that comes up sometimes, and uh, you know, people tend to get confused by it, or they, they don't realize, right? But if A is not greater than B, if you want the opposite of A is greater than B, that means that either A is less than B, or A is equal to B, right? Because if A and B were both five, you know, five is not greater than five, right? And so if we want to know the opposite of that, you know, it should be true. So we say less than or equal to, right? So just keep that in mind. The opposite of greater than is less than or equal to. The opposite of less than is greater than or equal to. And it goes in both directions. So the opposite of less than or equal to is greater than, and et cetera, et cetera. But that does come up and people do get confused by it. So I think it's, you know, worth taking the time to, to mention. And so, you know, we have these basic comparison operators. They just take two things, um, you know, and they, they compare them and, uh, you know, in some way, whatever way you want to compare them. And then it tells you true or false, your comparison is, is, is valid or it's not valid, right? But we can actually do some other things, uh, you know, to, to, to take these comparisons as building blocks and then make them, you know, more interesting. And so uh, we have this other operator called not, and it's actually just the word not. If you come from a language like C or Java, um, you would probably see the exclamation point instead. Uh, but in Python, it's actually the word not. And basically, not just means the opposite of, you know, whatever you had before. And so basically what happens is you get this, where you have not true is false. If I could write, let me, let me rewrite that. So not true is false and not false, I think you can guess that not false is true, right? And so basically what we could do, and you know, this may seem a little bit trivial at this point, is if we had, for example, A is equal to B, right? We have this condition. Well, what I could do is I'm gonna put it in parentheses and I'm gonna put the word not before it. And so basically what Python is going to do is it's first going to evaluate this condition, A equals to B, and then it's going to do this not, and it's just going to take whatever the value is, true or false, and invert it to be false or true. And so, for example, if A is equal to five and B is equal to six, the first part that we do is we do A is equal to B. Uh, and, you know, A is equal to B, uh, well, that's false, right? Because five is not equal to six. But then we have that not, and that not says, I'm gonna take you know, whatever the result was, and I'm going to give you back the opposite. So instead of false, it'll be true, right? And then let's say that A and B had the same value. Well, A equals equals B would be true, and so not would invert it, and it would become false. Now, of course, this example is trivial because this is the exact same thing as saying A is not equal to B like that. And so you may ask, well, what's the point of the not operator then? And at this point, uh, you know, given what we know, there's not too much of a point to the not operator. Uh, but when we talk about functions, it will become more important because, um, you know, we'll have a function, you know, you could have a function that, that gives a Boolean value and then maybe you want the opposite of it. So it's, it's not so much that you're making comparison at that point, it's just that you want to invert you know, this, this value that you just got. But that's, that's beside the point, so don't worry about that too much. Just know that the not operator will take a Boolean expression and it'll invert it. It'll give you the opposite of, of what it was. But more interesting uh, to us right now are the compound statements, which is and or or. Basically what these do is they let us take two separate Boolean conditions and combine them together um, into one condition. And they both do the same thing, but they do it in different ways. So for and, if we have, you know, condition one, let's call it x, and condition two, let's call it y, that means both x and y are true. Right? So basically, we're combining these two separate conditions um, together. And we're saying that in order for this, 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 uh, this compound condition, x and y, to be true, x itself has to be true and y itself has to be true. So if both x and y are false, or if x is false, or if y is false, 
then this compound condition is false. It's only true when x and y are both true, right? And so for example, um, let's say we have one condition, something like a is greater than b, and then we have another condition like c is greater than d. And just imagine that there are four, four numbers, you know? Let's say we have a is equal to five, b is equal to four, c is equal to seven, and d is equal to six, right? Uh, let's say we have those four numbers. So what do we do? Well, we check the first condition. Is A greater than B? Well, uh, you know, is five greater than four? Yes, it is, so that's true. Then we check the second condition. We say, is C greater than D? Well, C is seven and D is six, so that's also true. And since both of those conditions are true, the result of the compound condition is gonna be true. And one way that you can represent this is with uh, a truth table. So it's basically just a table where you show every possible um, you know, value. So if we have x and y, and then we have a column for x and y, right? Well, x can be true or false, and y can be true or false. So there's only four possible permutations. It looks like this, false, 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 true, true, false, true, true, right? There's no fifth you know, possibility that isn't redundant because each of X and Y have two states. And so you can, you can uh, permute them together in four different ways. And you know, to fill this table out very quickly, we only get true in the case that both X and Y are true. So if either one or both of those conditions are false, then the compound condition will also be false. And so given that table and the general idea, I think you can, you know, imagine if we changed the numbers for A, B, C, and D, how, you know, it might play out. For example, if we set A to be 4 and B to be 5, so let's say A is 4 and B is 5, right? So now this first condition we're asking is, um, you know, is 4 greater than 5? Well, that's false, right? And as soon as we have you know, false and true, well, that's this line in the table right here. X is false and Y is true. And so we actually end up getting false. And you get the idea. So then we can also take a look at or. And so going with the same idea of, uh, of X and Y, we have X or Y, which means X is true or Y is true or both are true. Right, so it's it's you know it's a bit different than and. It basically says uh, you know it's it's not the opposite of and. It's definitely not uh, the opposite of and, um, but it's a bit different because it says uh, you know as long as at least one condition is true or if both of them are true, then the result overall is true. Right, and so you know again we can let's just draw the the table out again. We have x y and we have x or y, let me just uh, do a little bit better with the spacing. Okay, and again, we only have you know four possible uh, rows for this table. Okay, right, so if they're both false, you know, then the or is gonna be false because we said x is true or y is true or both are true. Well, we're not, you know, meeting any of those conditions. Um, you know, in this case, the rest of these are all going to be true because in the second row, this row right here, y is true, that's enough for us. In this row right here, x is true, that's enough for us. And in the last row right here, uh, both x and y are true, which is also good for us to deal with here. And so the or works in the same way as the and, it's just true and false under different conditions. But the idea again is that you combine two different uh, conditions, two different Boolean values, uh, together into this compound statement, and the the compound statement will be true or false depending on, um, you know, depending on the values of x and y. I guess these are technically compound expressions, so it's not really important. But I guess I'll I'll make that change there. But I think you get the idea, you know, with or, and we're gonna practice, you know, all of this stuff in the uh, in the lab as well. So if it's a little bit confusing now, I think it'll get cleared up in the lab. And the last thing that I think is worth talking about is short circuiting. And it's actually not a bad thing; it's actually a good thing in, uh, you know, in computer science 
whereas in you know circuit building it's considered a bad thing and so here's where this problem comes up it says uh, here's here's an example problem so given two integers a and b write the condition that checks to see if a is a factor of b so you want to write a condition that's true if a is a factor of b and false if a is not a factor of b so for example if a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 12 it should be true right because 3 is a factor of 12 3 times 4 is 12. Uh, but if a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 12, that's false, because 5 is not a factor of 12, right? And so now we need to figure out, well, how exactly can we write this condition? Well, if a is a factor of b, that means that you can divide b by a, and you, you know, it'll divide in evenly. So for example, in the first case, if we do 12 divided by 3, we get 4, and that's, it's a, you know, no remainder or anything. Uh, you know, in the other example, you know, B, we do 12 divided by 5, we're not going to get a whole number. And so I guess I kind of gave it away, but, but how do you know if it divides in evenly? Well, you see, is there a remainder? If there's no remainder, um, you know, then it divides in evenly and it is a factor, right? And so basically you want to check this condition. You want to say B mod A, and I actually drew the, the, uh, the percent sign correctly this time, B mod A is equal to not b but zero let's try that again b mod a is equal to zero and remember this is the modulus this came up um earlier on in the math lecture i think it was lecture number three but it calculates the remainder so b mod a is equal to zero saying what's the remainder of doing b divided by a right so in the first example 12 divided by three well it's four and there's no remainder so it's equal to zero that's true uh, in the other example, we do 12 divided by 5, we're going to end up getting a remainder of 2 fifths, which is 0.4, right? And so it's not 0. And so, um, and so this would be false. And so everything looks good here, right? Uh, but there is actually a problem, because let's say that a is equal to 0. And so if a is equal to 0, we would want to say false, right? 0 is not a factor of you know any other number i guess you could say there's the case is zero a factor of zero i don't know this isn't really a math class it's it's more you know computer science related so let's just say that if a is zero we would want this to be false right you know in the first example if a is zero and b is 12 well zero is not a factor of 12 because zero multiplied by anything is not 12 right and so we would want it to be false but the problem is when you do b mod a you're saying, what is the remainder of doing b divided by a? Well, if a is 0, you're trying to do division by 0, and you will get an error. You'll get a divide by 0 error, uh, or an arithmetic error in Python. And it'll say divide by 0. Right, so that's no good. We, we, we can't do that. And a lot of people forget, um, you know, they forget, uh, you know, with modulus, that modulus really is kind of like division. It's, it's basically the same as division just giving the remainder instead of the, the you know, the, the quotient, I guess. Um, but you do need to still check for modulus by zero. And so right now, if, if A were zero, our program, you know, this, this expression would give uh, an error and it wouldn't work. And so what we need to do is we need to write a second condition to make sure that A is not zero. And then we need to combine those two conditions together somehow. And so what we'll do is you know we'll say the first condition is easy a is not equal to zero right so a can't be equal to zero and b mod a has to be equal to zero then then it'll be true then you know a is a factor of b and we need to combine these two uh, conditions together and so to combine them we can either use and or or we use and if we need both of them to be true and we use or if we need at least one of them to be true and so the one that we want to use here would be and, right? Because both of these conditions need to be true in order for, um, you know, A to be a factor of B. And so we want to join them together with and, right? And so that's simple, but where does this whole short circuiting thing come in? Well, keep in mind, let's say that if A is equal to zero and B is equal to 12, right? If I evaluate B mod A, is equal to zero, this will give me an error message, right? It's gonna crash the program, it's gonna give me an error, no good. But of course, if I have this other condition first, a is not equal to zero, um, well, 
that would be um, you know false, right? Because a is equal to zero. And so what Python will actually do is it will evaluate when you have an and, it'll evaluate the condition on the left hand side first, right? And it'll say, if this is true, you know, then I don't know yet. We need to check the other condition. But if it's false, then we can stop right there. And the reason, let's go back to this table. Um, let's go back to this table right here. Um, notice that whenever x, so remember x is the condition on the left. Remember, whenever x is false, the result is false, right? So whenever x is false, the result is false. And that just goes back to, to what we were saying. X, uh, you know, in, the, in the, uh, you know, the compound expression for and, we said both x and y have to be true. So if x is false, obviously the thing is going to be false, right? And so if, if, this, if this expression happens to be false, then there's no point in checking the other expression, right? Because whether it's true or false, the result of the compound expression is going to be false, you know, based on that table that we drew, right? And so Python will just not evaluate the other expression. And so if it happens to be the case that a is equal to zero, this first expression here, a is not equal to zero, will be false. And Python won't even try to evaluate the second expression, which means that you will not attempt division by zero, which means that you will now no longer get an error. And so that's the whole idea with the short circuiting is Python will evaluate the left condition. And if the left condition is false and you have an and, then the right condition won't be evaluated because there's no reason to. And there's also one for or. And if you look at the table for or, you'll notice that whenever the left hand condition is true, the compound condition x or y um, is also true, right? Because remember, for or we said x is true or y is true or both are true. So if x is true, obviously the result is true. So basically to sum this up, if we have x, or I guess even just to write it like this, if we have false and some condition y, we know that the result is going to be false and we don't even need to evaluate y because whatever y is still gonna be false. And the opposite, or I guess the case for or would be if we have true or y, we know that this result is going to be true because whether y is true or false, it doesn't matter. Um, we know that the whole result is going to be true. And so that's the idea with short circuiting is by you know combining these conditions together, Python will actually um, you know, only evaluate as many expressions as it needs to, which will make your program faster. In a case like this, it won't be noticeably faster, but in some cases it could be uh, noticeably faster. But even beyond just being faster, it will uh, make your code a bit safer because then you can add checks like this to say, don't do this potentially dangerous calculation until I know that the calculation is not dangerous. And so that's all that I want to say about Booleans. Now, on their own, they aren't terribly useful. You know, we, we wrote this code to check a condition, and we're going to write some code uh, in the lab to check a bunch of conditions, um, you know, just as practice. But what we'll learn, we'll learn uh, if statements in the next lecture, and those will allow us to actually use these conditions, use these Boolean uh, expressions to change the way that our code runs, to change the path that our code takes. And that'll make more sense in the next lecture, but just to give you an idea of where we're headed, you know, with this concept of, of a Boolean. And so in the lab, as I said, we're going to get some more practice writing conditions. It'll be similar to this last slide here. Uh, you know, we'll walk through all of them. And, um, and that's basically it for Booleans. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the lab. Bye for now.